As you can see on screen, this is the location. It was in plain sight all along. Hi there, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Today we're ticking off the list, another key big mystery within the case. Almost like a sub-factor and a sub-lead. A place of interest, a person of interest from that location, and that is Don Hatley's place of living, Don's trailer in Lucent, Utah. Directions have been given left, right and center over time, yet they've all been supposedly incorrect until just recently when a competent high IQ individual viewer reached out and made it very clear as that when it came to the Dylan Rounds documentary, as for the location and from their own knowledge and coordinates provided, finally, there is confirmation of the true place of Don's. And today I'm gonna to reveal it to you publicly. Why? Because technically, it was already revealed publicly in the past. But as for awareness, as for levels of access, that's not been a success. Because when it comes to the Dylan Rounds documentary, not everyone has watched it, not everyone wants to watch it, not everyone can access it, okay? I've seen it myself. Shout out to Watcher of Drama in the background for providing that in the past on YouTube. I did do an analysis of it at the time, but I was too focused with the information and listening into the audio and the body language of the people being interviewed, such as the family members and the grandparents of Dylan Rounds. I neglected a key photo when they were talking about Don Hatley. But thankfully, one of the viewers on my channel, shout out to them, recently referred back to it. It must have triggered a memory. They must have thought something from the past and they brought it back up and it all makes sense now. There is every small chance that in the past I actually highlighted the area and went over it when I did my loose map analysis, but I didn't know it was the true place at the time. So today, the structure and order, I'm going to give you a slideshow presentation of revealing this to you, the backstory, where it came from, what it's all about, the actual location. Then we can go on to, I guess, Google Earth, so I can share it with you, put it into perspective, and even compare to Bing Maps. There is a difference. One photo shows the items present, the other one doesn't. We're gonna be looking at Google Earth and Bing Maps. Bing Maps is out of date. It's dated around 2022 satellite imagery, around the time of the Dylan Rounds case onwards, and around the time of when Don Hartley was still living in Lucent, Utah, okay? As for the Google Earth satellite imagery, that's around 2024 onwards. By then, Don Hatley moved out of losing Utah after around 2023 or just before to go to Casper City, Wyoming with his family, etc. And in that process and transition, just in rounds on and off, was targeting him online, calling him out and wanting him to confess because he knew something or was involved in some way and made mistakes along the way. We never found out much behind it or conclusion to it. Remains a mystery there, but at least tying bits up as we go along is important in the cleanup job of the Dylan Rounds case. Whilst Dylan Rounds' body has been found and recovered in recent time and the main guy responsible, James Brenner opening up and making a plea deal to reveal the location with the authorities. And whilst that's been a success, justice hasn't been 100% served just yet. There are still ongoing things. As for the autopsy report, I don't know what's going on with that. I've not heard anything. As for the location of where Dylan Rounds' body was truly found, I've not even heard about that. None of that has been mentioned officially yet, or at least at this moment in time of recording. Hopefully that follows soon, just so we tie up more off the list, etc. Okay, so we've got a handful of things to get through today. Visually, it should be of your interest. Make sure to stick around so you fully understand what's being talked about today. And I want to highlight one other key point as well, very shortly, to you know squash any resistance. So welcome to those that are currently here in this live premiere. Feel free to share your thoughts, opinions in the live chat. And in general, leave your comments and opinions down below. I can respond back to them later. Down below under this video, you'll find a pinned comment by me. 
with some additional links if you wish to check them out, if you want to support this channel in one way or another, there are many ways possible. If you simply want to catch up on the recent video of mine from yesterday or so, top right corner of the screen, click on the eye symbol, you'll be able to find it. If you'd like to see my earlier video today, that will be available as well on the eye symbol, where I talk about my final decision being made with the future of this channel. But on top of that, my experiences, very strange in recent time. If you want to learn more about that, be sure to catch up on that video. But for now, let's just focus back on Dylan Rounds. So, why was Don Hatley's place of living such a mystery to begin with? That's what we need to understand. Now, the reason why is because no true location or coordinates were ever given by anyone, by people out there and locals. None never provided true coordinates. A few people here and there, like Ty Corbin and Lance Kelly, said, this is it, this is the spot, and even recorded it from a distance. Turned out they got it wrong, right? Actual locals got the area wrong. That says a lot, doesn't it? But, you know, it is what it is. Heavy D actually did a flyby really early on in the beginning of the case, and they actually flew over the place of Don's, but it was not labelled at the time, unlike Dylan's and um, the name of the Grange Shed property. That was labelled in their video, but Don's wasn't. I guess it wasn't confirmed at the time or known of, but fast forward onwards to when the Dylan Rounds documentary came out, it was labelled and confirmed. So it seems pretty much done and solved, but I need to show you it visually as proof. Now, in between, the odd individual that knew the location, they knew the location of Don's place, but they never gave it out publicly. Why? Well, first of all, it was Taylina, Taylina, the daughter of Kurt Wadsworth, who said she knows where Don's place is, but does not want to give it out because it could harm the case and it could lead to people going there and stealing items. I have many questions in response to that individual and just in general. I can understand the motive, but considering that there is a public documentary that reveals the location, the location, and Many people would have seen the documentary out there. The fact that Heavy D did a flyby of the actual place, granted wasn't labelled, but it was in the documentary with the same footage used. Over a million people have watched that video. So why does it really need to be kept a secret when it's already in public view? It might just not be quite, you know, labelled as this is it, basically it has been revealed publicly visually and even on the maps so why do we need to hide it why do some people need to hide it out there when it's already out in public information my thoughts are maybe these locals and people are unaware that the dylan rounds documentary exists and that heavy d's video exists possibly now why didn't I cover this in the past, if some people may ask? Well, it's simply because I genuinely didn't know at the time. And um, When I did come across that documentary, I was in tunnel vision mode. I was writing notes down and listening, li listening to the audio. So when the slide and photo showed up of Don Hatley, I must have, you know, ignored it, brushed past it. Valuable stuff missed. But luckily, a viewer on my channel caught it and referenced it in recent time so that's why we're looking back at it now and that's why we're covering it public now because it has already been revealed publicly before so it's not going to cause any damage to this case so no one needs to worry and those in the background that may show resistance all of a sudden well that says more about you than anyone else does it highlight that you're responsible in some way in the background for covering up stuff i don't know but hopefully people will understand this video and let's get into the visual storytelling now with the slides. Take in mind, I'm not using any footage from the documentary, footage, video footage, because of copyright last time, that corrupt nature. Yeah, adaptation. Let's just look at the slides it'll make more sense. So what we have first on screen is a modern photo of Don Hatley, known as Dylan's neighbor. 
you see him on screen, it's consistent with previous photos. What we've looked at, the older he's got, the bigger he has got too. Similar to the one what we saw where he was wearing that hog t-shirt inside of that bar. Maybe not too far apart from one another. He appears to be using an iPhone in that photo. I don't know where it was taken or how long ago it was, but it would have been more modern time. This was all from the Dylan Rounds documentary part one, okay? Where it first introduced Don Hatley as how he was close to Dylan and close to Brenna. Long time friend of Brenna and as for Dylan, working together from dating back in the past, looking out for one another. Don injured in the past from a farming incident and the grandparents helping Don and, you know, looking after him. So it formed a relation, friendship there. And then Don working for Dylan, then Don, long time friends with Brenna, inviting Brenna to work with Dylan and Dylan allowing that. And also Don inviting or I guess uh, encouraging Brenna to move from Montello over into Lucent, Utah. So there are references made and backstories there. And it's just good that material is provided. Then as for when it was talking about location, now Nate Eaton and as for the audio in the background, they didn't directly say, but visually they did show it on screen. And it wasn't really a poor, you know, visual representation either because actual photos were given and used. Now, working on trying to find it on the maps does require some, you know, natural effort by the viewer. And that's what the viewer did in the background when reaching out to me. They looked at the photo, they compared it to what they could see on the map, they got the coordinates and then gave them to me, right? So when you look at that, yeah, map isn't quite clear. I, I don't know what type of map you would call that, if it's like a man-made one or like a blurred out one from Google or so. But you see it labeled about Dylan's farm. And you've got Don Hatley's feather up there. It looks a little bit messy, granted. I think that is that white line the wash, possibly. I'm not too probably probably not actually. But moving on to this, then it transitions to this photo when continuing to narrate. And we have seen this place before in the past because it's from Heavy D's video. As we see here, that flyby over when Heavy D and the crew, Diesel Brothers, went down to Lucent, Utah to talk with family and make sense of what was going on, which was really early on at the beginning of the investigation. A flyby was conducted in general of the area to locate if Dylan's body was found anywhere open in the desert. And they did not find Dylan, but at the time they did cover quite a bit of area and documented key places of interest, such as this one on screen. Now, at the time of seeing it back then, there was no labels or handles, no reference points, but the documentary reshared this photo from Heavy D's footage and labelled it Don Hatley's trailer. As you see, bottom left corner of the screen. So that basically confirms it now, and it was all public, mostly all along. It was just more so confirmed and highlighted in the documentary. So that's good news. But as for the true location, the coordinates, the distance from Dylan's or the grain shed property, this is very limited on screen. We do need to apply it on Google Earth imagery, and that's exactly what I'll do very shortly. But to focus in on Don's place so we can get a better look of things from an aerial viewpoint, but a side profile, not quite bird's eye view, so it's easier, 3D rendered, well, not rendered, because it's an actual footage, but we'll use this for now when describing it as for the place of interest to see what's present, what's of interest, you know, whether this has any link to proximity to where Dylan's body was found or not, that remains unknown. But if there's any possibility of Brenner playing a role roughly in this area on the day Dylan Rounds was murdered and possibly disposed of, I don't know if it would open up any leads, would this place need to be searched now? Probably not. But was it ever searched in the case? Kind of unknown. And in the past, I was trying to push it before the Dylan's body being found news was, does this place hold any mysteries or any key importance in the case? Does it still hold that level of importance now, considering how far the case has gone? Or is it a concluded piece? Maybe. Maybe the final nail in the coffin is by just confirming the location as of today, and then it being a one and done video finally. 
unless we hear about the location of Dylan's body and it just so happens to be near to this area. If that was the case, then I would make a follow-up update video. For the time being though, we'll just focus in on the location and geography of the place. So this location on screen, Don Hatley's, this being the place of living where Don was and the individual that invited James Brenner, the killer of Dylan Rounds, over on the 28th of May 2022 for a barbecue. Just so happened to occur in the afternoon, so earlier on in the day, James Brenner murdered Dylan Rounds and possibly disposed of him in the same day or a temporary burial, then made it to Don's place on the way, dumping Dylan's phone into Lucin Pond, 3.51pm being the final phone ping of that phone of Dylan's in the pond. So... The journey, Brenner set out, he was still disposing of things and clearing up after himself and then made it to Don's place. What happened there? Any conversations? Any confessions? We don't know. But there is that small possibility. Now, you got the backstory, we got the confirmation. What do we see on screen though? Do we see a graveled path? From the looks of it, arguably, yes. It's a lot greyer compared to the other areas where it's more sandy, dusty, off-road, mountains mounds, dirt mounds, but this appears to be gravel. And as we heard in the past, whether it be a parcel of land bought or owned by Don Hatley to do with gravel and using it, buying it to be able to create a gravel pathway for his road, his layout to get there and from, from his place of living. I understand it. It makes sense. You want a better road instead of just a simple dirt one. So it's a bit more compact. When it came to Dylan Rounds with farming, it was said that on his farm, and I think maybe the Grange Shed property, that land was flattened down and reinforced so vehicles would not sink in the ground. I understand that. Okay. So, fair bit of land, to be honest. There seems to be some action or activity over there at the time. Take in mind, likely at the time of when Heavy D was flying over, Don Hatley could have been inside of his trailer at the time, possibly. But over that way, appears to be a truck. Looks like there is a bit of a perimeter. I can see some fencing. I don't know if you can see the fence post, but there is some fencing there, maybe barbed wire. A few vehicle parts as well. Some possible junk just outside of that white truck, all supposedly belonging to Don Hartley. Most of this, what you see on screen, will not show up on Google Earth because the Google Earth imagery is more up to date post Don Hatley leaving the area and taking his items with him, okay? There is another perimeter there, if you can see, like a fence. It's like private land of Don's, and hence why no one's ever really gone onto his land. Yet Heavy D was able to fly over it without any trouble. So it's not wide, but it's very long, the land and road owned by Don Hatley, his place of loom. I think that might be a water butt, possibly, or some kind of water mini tower. There seems to be like an SUV truck part there on the side. Then here, I don't know what that is, whether it's a shed or a um, place of living, a building. Let me know what your thoughts are. This area, what you see on screen, the grey part, this kind of building construction, still remains on satellite imagery till this day, okay? Now, I can't remember if it was Candice Cooley, or if it was people online that were saying that Don Hatley moved away, but he left his trailer behind. I'm not too sure if Candice Cooley may have mentioned that in a previous interview. If so, I wonder where the trailer is, because that doesn't look like a trailer, but it was left behind. The actual trailer, which looks like an RV mobile home, or a literal RV trailer, which could have blocks underneath it to hold it up, possibly. This is no longer present on maps, just for reference. There appears to be possible burn barrels there. Maybe you used to have a bit of a fire bomb fire. There appears to be some kind of, what do you call it, ATV or more so quad bike. I prefer to call it quad bikes. You've got a quad bike there. It probably looks a bit blurry, but it's just in between the corner of the RV trailer and that small grey looking building. In the middle, there is a quad bike. And then we've got a trailer here with some resources on the back of it maybe planks of wood then you've got another vehicle there car or pickup truck gray kind of similar to the one over there and just in between the trailer and the truck there is another quad bike um and then there seems to be some more junk back there around the back 
There are two red vehicles, pickup trucks there. So he's got a range of vehicles, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then maybe I think there's a tank there, back there, whatever it's filled with. Yeah, so it's a reasonable plot of land and that up there too. It's not exactly a big area, granted, but at any point would Brenner have been influenced by this location besides the handing over of firearms and, in a way, passing the responsibility and blame onto Don Hatley short term. And then I guess Don catching wind of that and thinking, I, I want to play no role in this, you can have him back. Or more so, you know what, you can get in trouble and take the blame for it. So surrenders them in, grass is on Brenner. So you got the location, you got the idea, you got the confirmation. Let's now apply it on the actual maps and check out the distance. Here we are on screen. As you can tell, there's quite a few markers. I have incorporated it with a previous project, the Dually Truck Mystery, which can be a separate video for the future if it comes up. But at the time, we're just focusing on the markers up here to the left of the screen not far from Luton Airport. So to provide to you a key where the red star is at the top of the screen, that is the confirmed location by the documentary of Don Hatley's trailer, the same place where Heavy D did his flyby over at the beginning of the investigation. As for the two X's highlighted in blue are false locations which were incorrect locations given by people within the casing community. It's not about naming and shaming, it's just simply pointing it out who were the ones responsible for creating confusion and misdirection. That's all it is. Especially when you supposedly get experts out there who are supposedly locals and yet still manage to mess it up, okay? That's all it is, in case you're wondering. So what do we look at first? Well, the beginning, right? The beginning of trying to understand where was it originally at? The direction it was pointed in by Ty Corbin and Lance Kelly, they gave the incorrect location, now, that was never really contested besides the odd individual down here, okay? Most people kind of agreed with it and went along with it. But kind of in recent time, it was Kurt Wadsworth's daughter, Taylina, that outright said, Ty Corbin and Lance Kelly got it wrong. That is not the right location. The location that's being given is by another homeowner that, well, a person that lives there in a trailer, and it's not Don Hatley. A different place. It was also confirmed by this viewer on the channel that did make a visit down to Lewis in Utah previously in the past months ago who drove past the area and confirmed that it was of another person living there, not Don Hatley, because Don Hatley's place nowadays is abandoned, no one lives there, right? So that puts things into perspective. We zoom on into the original false hit location, as you see there, do we see Luton Airport over that way? The original false location, this is what we saw, where you could see a trailer, a vehicle, and then there was like some kind of foundations of a previous building of some sort, maybe railroad related. These were the coordinates of the false location, in case you're wondering. This is the area where Ty Corbin and Lance Kelly got the wrong location of Don Hatley's, which was unfortunate. Okay, so this is not it. What you see on screen here, this is not Don Hatley's place. Okay, and as for the distance and reference point, we do have Lucin Pond here. Okay, Lucin Pond, and in that direction, Don Hatley's trailer. And down that way, Grain Shed property. And in the distance, Dylan's farm. In case you're wondering, and just before the wash. We do have, uh, just before the pond, we've got the wash here, as you can see. Okay. As I said, this is updated imagery 2024, so some things will be missing, and it'll become very apparent once we get to the confirmed location. Now, the other false location given was by a random individual on YouTube who had a blue profile picture called Bouncy Bounce. They're a bit of a weird individual with idiosyncratic behaviour, quite critical, never really had anything positive to say or much to contribute to the case. And they were basically saying that this location is not it. 
Well, they were correct. Instead, they said, by Lucin Hill is the location, round the back, supposedly. Well, if we look round the back, you can see like uh, maybe a graveled part, graveled area, whether that's the bit owned or not. But honestly, when looking about, and I did apply it in the past, there was no sign of a trailer or place of living. Now, granted, at the time, the reason why it was harder to come to a, uh, some kind of conclusion was because, one, you got the factor of satellite imagery either being too up-to-date or too outdated, and back then, it was too outdated. It was 2019, and, you know, not everything would show or appear. Some things would be missing, so there was that factor to take in mind. The next factor, knowing that Don Hatley moved on, so his stuff wouldn't be there, it was trying to think, well, wouldn't it be like a needle in a haystack? Surely you would need at least one item or object to remain on site, so then you could use it as a reference point for the future, right? Because everything's gone and he's packed up. If you do have up-to-date imagery, but you do have the location, you're not going to know because there's no sign or indication that Don Hatley was once living here, right? So it was a bit in the air for a while. So Bouncy Bounce was another individual that caused misdirection, false location given, which was unfortunate. So we've got the three individuals present already. Now we need to move on to the confirmed location. If you wonder what those highlighted lines are, they are dirt tracks in which I've just highlighted. And one of which leads on to one of the main dirt roads, which um, Ty Corbin was near at the time of when he said that cap John Deere hat was found. So where Ty Corbin was at the time, I think it might have been this dirt road or nearby. It was a way around this area, it was away from the pond because of um, it was out of sight because of the distance. And he did turn around and he showed Lucin Hill in the background. So it was on a dirt road and he pointed out how nearby branches off to this private one here. And you got the overhead lines highlighted in black, which worked the way down that way. But I said, yes, it leads to this place. It might be private, but it's not Don Hartley. So Ty Corbin got it wrong in the past, and Ty Corbin got it wrong when he did his last video when coming across that hat. Well, the other person did, and then he highlighted it and pointed out the location. Wrong. As for the turn-off point, well, yeah, but turning left and heading down, let me zoom out, heading down that way, not straight on. Going straight on leads to the wrong location, another person's place of living. But, if you turn left and you follow those track marks, highlighted in orange, fair distance, very interestingly, not far from Don's place, the wash, or a wash, which is very, very convenient, right? Something I never gave attention in the past because I was never looking in this area exactly. So it's unfortunate that. But you follow the dirt track as it bends in and out, quite a bit of distance, as said. Once we get to this point here, it becomes graveled. You see the colour change, okay? It becomes graveled, or somewhat graveled, maybe from the colouring and lighting of it. And then once we get here, this is it. This is the spot, right? This is the location of Don's. So we followed it through. We can even follow it back afterwards in the distance. You see Lucin Hill over there where Bouncy Bounce marker is. And then a bit of a blind spot because of that mountain there. But over in that distance, Dylan rounds Grain Shed property the distance, a fair bit of distance away, right? And this would have been the location where Brenner would have had to have gone from the grain shed property up to here. So very lightly and obviously he used a vehicle because there would be no way he would walk this total distance. Not a chance. So, some of you might be thinking, well, where's the two red vehicles? Where's the quad bikes? Where's that big RV trailer, the white one? It's not showing, is it? Exactly. Because this imagery is after Don Hatley moved out of Lewis and Utah, so he took up most, if not all, his items with him. What is remaining is that structure there, like a shed, some kind of building structure. You can see casted shadows behind it, so there is height to it and a ledge. So I don't think you'd call this a trailer, more of a, like a shack, a shed. Let me know your thoughts there. 
if it is some kind of building structure, is there anything inside of it of interest or value? As I said, maybe not as valuable now considering the way the case has gone and with Dylan being found, but when reflecting back, how much significance did this place truly have? There appears to be some junk or scrap left behind, as you see there, highlighted. The area does appear a bit darker in colour because I guess this is graveled. Um, obviously, it was much clearer when we looked at the real-time footage by Heavy D that was graveled. Just up this way, I think, was probably the area not far from where we saw that truck, you know, slightly higher up. The truck on the side with some items. It doesn't look like it's there now, so that's been moved on. The... Other items are quite hard to see because it's not exactly crystal clear, is it? But this is the area. It truly is. Over here, I guess that is a water hole or some kind of well with water, maybe for animals. Besides the dirt track, what we saw, which went over that way, there appears to be track marks which go over here. And we can follow it just to see where it goes, okay? I don't know how often it was used this by Don, but it went in and out and it kind of dropped down to here, but to be honest, as it drops down here, conveniently, it goes into a wash. Once again, if this was looked at earlier on in the case, this would have really stood out to me because there is a dirt road, a private dirt road that leads to Don Hatley's place of living in which on the day of the 28th when Dylan Rounds was murdered, Brenner went that direction to Don's place to hang out. And it just so happens before you turn on that bend, if you continue on, you end up down here, which is a created dirt path by the likes of Don Hatley from the looks of it, because you can clearly see track marks, and it leads into a wash. How convenient is that? You know what I'm saying? In the past, at least, when we had the theory that Dylan may have been put into a wash, could this have been the example or the actual route taken? There are still questions, right? Because we don't have the location of where Dylan's body was actually found at. There are many rumours in the background, but we need official confirmation. That's not come out yet. If it can be, well, that's great. Then we can compare and contrast. But what's the name of this wash which is near to... Don's place, I think it was called a Thousand Creek. A Thousand Spring Creek. So I believe when we followed it in the past, we went up this way going west, which would end up, yeah, towards Montello. You can see it in the distance, so it's like snake format. It goes and reaches Luray Wash, which goes into Montello, Nevada, across the border. So we have been down that way. We have. And yet, all this time in the past, when I went down it, I was so close to Don's place. I was literally here, looking down the wash. And just over there, where that marker is, that's where Don's place was. And in parallel to this Thousand Spring Creek wash, in parallel is a dirt road track from Don's place, which was probably created by Don, which actually leads into going into part of the wash. And the wash over this way, which is looking like it's north, does that go up to Grouse Creek? It does. This was the wash which I looked at previously months ago, Grouse Creek, working my way down into Lucent. You had Bald Eagle Mountain over that way. You got Montello, Nevada over that way, so that's west. We're looking down south. East is over that way. Kind of southeast is the pond, grain shed property, Dylan's farm in the distance. And just before that, Don's place highlighted in red. This wash which works its way down, which just happens to be where I was in the past. I never knew that there was track marks there, which if you followed it, would have brought me to this bend. And then if I turned left, I would have got to Don's place. So I wasn't that far off in the past. I just didn't have the pointers at the time. But I wasn't far off. So that's very, very interesting. I want to know your thoughts of this area. It's kind of interesting. Of course, it's quite desolate and empty and further out. But there is concealment if you think about it. Because it does dip down. I don't know if you call it into a valley. But it's kind of like dipping 
And over that way, at least, you got that mountain, a bit of concealment there. And nearby, the wash, which drops down as well if you used to go into it. So, let me know your thoughts. For those people that aren't convinced by this location, we'll do a comparison, okay? We'll get this same place up on Bing maps, which still have the items present, and then it will look exactly the same as what we saw on Heavy D's footage, okay? Before we do that, just because I will provide, even though most of the humans out there don't, these are the coordinates of Don Hatley's place of living, former place of living, which still appears to have some kind of abandoned building or so on site. The coordinates, as you see on screen, follow with them accordingly. If, as said, if this causes trigger or outrage within some humans out there, tough fucking shit, okay? Because this was public for some time, so there's no need to hide it. Those that hide it, despite knowing there is public information on this location, it's like they're trying to cover the truth. That is disappointing, okay? So, with that being said and done, let's go to the same exact spot, but look at it on Bing Maps. Here we are, Bing Maps. You may wonder why the aspect ratio. It's because I've activated the desktop mode. What I realised was, when I was accessing Bing Maps on mobile in the past, whilst there was an annoying white border around the screen, the limitation on top was it prevented me from zooming in closer to locations, which was very disappointing. When comparing this onto desktop Bing Maps, it was miles ahead. So I thought I'll use the desktop version on mobile. It does make everything zoomed in, so I had to rotate the screen so I could actually see what I was looking at on screen. Okay, a little bit messy, but by doing this, it actually enables me to flip the screen. It's a miracle, isn't it? Look at that, we can actually flip the screen for once. So, Reference point, you got Lucent Pond there. Obviously, it doesn't look as bad for wear, but this was 2022 imagery. It was 2023 when the pond was dug up, dredged, and trees were cut down, hence why it looks perfectly clear and normal there, okay? So that's just a reference point in case you're wondering. So we need to head over this way, okay? And it's just down there. We've got the creek wash, Thousand Spring Creek Wash, whatever you want to call it, goes in that distance. We've got the bit where it branches off over there, which goes up to Grouse Creek in the distance. And then down here, we've got the bit where it drops down, and you've got the track marks, which, if you follow it up, would lead to the uh, place of Don's, okay? So if I just zoom back out and focus down here, zoom on in, it's here. Remember those dirt mounds? Flip the screen. I know it's not the clearest, but surely you can see the items. Up there on the mound, you've got the truck parked up on the side with some items nearby. And then lower down, you've got that grey looking shack building. It does look like a shed from the looks of it. As I said, I can zoom in better here, so that's good. Nearby to it, you've got the white RV trailer, as we saw in Heavy D's flyby footage. Nearby, um, I don't know about the car part there, but there's two vehicles part there. One is a car, like a truck, pickup truck, and the next to it is the trailer. And in between it is that black little object, which is the quad bike. And then in between the sh grey looking shed and trailer, there's a black object there, which is the quad bike exactly as we saw on Heavy D's flyby footage in the exact same position. And then also the two red pickup truck vehicles there. So just about everything seems to remain in place. You got the black looking water tub, water butt, if that way it was. You got the um, barrel back there. You got the burn barrel there. It's all in place like it's never moved. Now, some of the stuff may not be in use, but what I'm getting at is what you see on screen is the exact same location as what we were looking on Google Earth just before. Now, I don't know if it... No, unfortunately, I can't get the coordinates up on screen, but it is the same exact place. You can see the road layout as well, how it's darker and patchy in areas because of the gravel, as we saw on Google Earth, and you saw that shed, right? This is Don Hatley's place of living.
This is what was shown by Heavy D at the start. It, it was just never labelled until that documentary came out. Not everybody saw it, so not many people would know. That's why I needed to make this video now with a reference by the viewer recently about it so more people learn and the mystery can finally be put to bed in terms of the location, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. Be sure to like and share this video so more people learn about it. As I said, I want to clear things up and reflect back on the Dylan Rounds case so there's not as many loose ends. A range of people with time have unfortunately caused disruption. I'm trying to fix those problems along the way. There's no harm in doing so. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Glad we've been able to bring it to conclusion and apply it to the maps once again. So we'll see what happens next. Um, as for Dylan Rounds, it's all coming down to waiting for updates and confirmation and other things. And then I could possibly apply it to my previous video ideas, but we'll just wait. If you do have any official updates or confirmation, let me know down below in the comments if you're able to. And in the meantime, I'll probably focus on Kenny Veach or any other video ideas in between. So be on the lookout for all that stuff. And as said, check my previous videos out in recent times so you catched up there. And yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate people's patience. Goodbye. Good night for now.